Greetings, geeks. Welcome to a very feisty episode of Geeks in Space. This is episode 483. I am Rob Commander Taco Malda, and I am in pretend low Earth orbit with two of the finest geeks that you're ever going to meet uh, in a very oddly laid out win- window. And I apologize, Jake and Elon. Uh, Chris DeBona. Hi. Rob Roseboom. Hey there. Everybody's cool. Everybody's safe. Everybody's happy. Um. I guess. Sure. Cool. Yeah, I mean, so far, no. So, yeah, there's there there isn't a story for this in Taco Zone, but I find myself um, uh, both nostalgic and excited about a dumb piece of software that just hit the Microsoft Windows Store. Yeah. Are, are you installing Power Toys? No. No. <laughs> okay. So here's the thing. Um, let me pause that because I don't actually want to hear it in the, in the broadcast. Um, what I'm trying to figure... Okay, okay, okay. So, set the Wayback Machine to the mid-2000s. All right, Mr. Maybe, Peabody. Maybe even e- even earlier, like 2005, 2006. So, Amazon actually has been running uh, a video service for a really, really long time, okay? Um, before they called it Prime Video or whatever. They, they've, they've been selling videos for a long time at least I, this is how i remember it you know and and one of the things that they had is they had apps for unusual devices like the the french android tablet maker uh, whose name escapes me uh and the rest and they would allow you to download videos and it was through this a uh, windows app and they had a windows app also where you could watch the video you couldn't do it through the web right so I'm, we're talking about a long time ago Anyway, so they just do I have to install real media player in order to make this work? No, seriously, this is during that time. Right. So uh, so so Windows, uh, the Windows Store now has an Amazon Prime video app. And the reason that's important is because Netflix uh, has an Amazon Prime video. Sorry, has a Windows Store video app. And that's the only way you can get proper five one sound out of Netflix shows. Okay. So you're with me. Yep. So you need to install the, the Netflix Windows app if you want to, you know, pump, you know, five one surround. And it's actually really good, like in Lost in Space and some of the other shows uh, into your stereo. Right. And really enjoy surround zone. So uh, the idea is that maybe Amazon is like, OK, well, we'll do that because we a want to be in the same place that Netflix, Netflix doesn't compete. And maybe they'll pump out real sound now because they didn't. So the problem is within web browsers. To, you can't you can't pump out five one sound because none of the browsers have negotiated the licenses with Dolby to be able to pump out the right kind of signals for Do- Dolby. So this is why I have to like pay ten dollars in order to download an Atmos plugin. Yes, this is exactly why you have to pay ten dollars to download an Atmos plugin from again the Windows Store. So so this is this is interesting. So I wonder if. Like Man in the High Castle, or or things like Upload, have five one sound. So they do. I haven't looked into it yet. They um, do. If you watch it on an Apple TV, you just have that, and you have for years. Right. Exactly. So, but I don't use. I'm not part of the Apple Steve Jobs, you know, worship religious. System. You know, he's dead, so, right? Like he died. Uh, he 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 wasn't able to eat fruit uh, and achieve immortality on his fruititarian uh, diet. I mean, listen. Um, I think he could have lived if he had tried to not meditate away his cancer. And so by the time he made the decision to do whatever he could to, yeah. to live, it was kind of disgusting and sad. Yeah, but he, he, had, he had pancreatic cancer and that. That one sucks. Yeah, he caught, he yeah. caught it really early. Yeah. This is the thing. He caught it really early and he was in denial and he went around yeah. basically yeah. saying he was going to diet know, it away. Maybe. Maybe. Like, I'm just saying that even catching it early, that's one of the worst cancers you can have. So. It absolutely is. I've, I've had relatives die of it. It sucks. But, I mean, the thing is, he you, you know he bought a house in every transplant district. Yep. Right? right. It's like, I mean, he did. When he finally decided, oh, maybe I should do something about this, you know, he, he, he was really aggressive and used his entire pile of money resources to make it happen. Yeah. But it was too late. But that said, uh, I have an Apple TV and I can actually do Dolby Atmos uh, in my in my office. Uh, 
Although I, I don't know that if I can do it through uh, through uh, YouTube. I haven't tried that. And I also haven't tried through Chromecast. Yeah, so I've done it through Chromecast. Uh, um, I've done it through YouTube through Chromecast. But Does Chromecast, so I, su- like if I, if I stream a video on YouTube from like a Chrome browser through Chromecast to my TV, is that going to maintain 5.1? Um, or is it just the browser that eats it? I, I think it would probably break that cycle somehow. Mm. I, I don't know. Because because some Chromecast videos, basically you're sending them the link to the video. Right. When you when you Chromecast and some Chromecast videos, you're actually sending the signal from the browser. It's doing some sort of transcode, you know. And so I think in that case, it probably wouldn't survive. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't worry I mean, too much. I, about- I've had a lot of l- luck with like VLC to, you know, through the Windows sound device to the receiver decoder, so that can work. What's crazy to me is uh, like a lot of like I deal a lot with the uh, the ASIO devices uh, for like mm-hmm. streaming this and stuff, and it, it's amusing to me how many of those devices are are organized around the notion of eight channels. Uh, you know, because you got your seven point one uh, surround sound, so a lot of this stuff is like eight channels. So I got like eight channels for each of my devices. Uh, but none of that is the standard Windows driver layer, uh, and mm-hmm. it's a freaking nightmare uh, that makes me want to, you know, cut off my body parts and eat them. Murder. Yeah. Uh, and so we've actually had this Twitch suspends Trump campaign account pinned the whole time. I know. I don't know. Yeah, it's, I, I decided to check the stream to make sure that we were doing audio right. So. Do we still sound good? Are we sweet? You know, honestly. We sound yeah, wonderful. I, I to check the stream. Oh, now you're back. Now I hear me. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, Twitch uh, suspended the Trump campaign account, uh, which seems a little more aggressive than just putting uh, the little text underneath it that says maybe this is me- not good. <laughs> Warning might be racist. <laughs> So what's morning. funny about this is I'm picturing like you know Trump waking up you know two days ago he's like you know what I gotta do today I'm gonna stream me some Minecraft to my followers right <laughs> right hi guys hi guys how you M- doing make Twitch great exactly, again you know he wears like a really deep V you know you know shirt and he's trying to sex it up you he know? spends like, he spends all day uh, getting people to bring him uh, cobblestone so he can tell them where to build the wall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video. And, and oh, oh, look, uh, J- John's giving me some uh, some some coins, some some extra points. Thanks, you know. Right. It's weird though, right? That it's almost to the very end of of this of this term that people are finally like, okay, the the PR gold now has switched. Uh, yeah. We can finally get more for banning him than. Yeah than letting him be even though this has clearly been a topic of trouble and a topic of conversation for for three and a half years three and a half years right yeah and now finally people like okay well you know facebook (laughs) did some bad stuff let's jump on that boat well what cracks me up about it is they're like listen um you know i don't know about those guys but we've always been uncomfortable with donald trump and now that he's he's waning in power yep Oh, we're going to show you just how good we are. Honestly, yep. it's freaking offensive. Like when people yep. leave the administration and they're like, oh, oh, I'm having such a hard time. Here's my book. Eating a burrito in a restaurant yeah. and getting hired and selling my books. I don't know why everyone's coming out of me. I left because I had a crisis of conscience after working for Donald yeah. Trump for three and a half years. It's like, you know what? Screw you, you bully. You know, uh, you should pay for your actions. You signed the oath, man. You signed the oath. Everyone jumping on it now reminds me of one of my favorite scenes from the old movie uh, Dragon Slayer, where the dragon has been killed <laughs> by our young hero. The king, the king, rides up with his sword, shoves it in the dragon's carcass, and everyone's like, "Hooray! He killed the dragon!" You know? Hell, King Dragon yeah. Slayer. Hey, for what it's that- worth, Chris, I'm getting about one frame a second out of you, and uh, Roseboom is like glass, so. Uh, it's you right now, and I'd also like to do a do a shout out to uh, to JB three one eight in the Discord. Uh, hey, uh, yes, you are correct. This is the Indiana Jones background. Fitz made this. Yeah, Fitz made this, and we've been passing it around. 
because everybody needs a uh, 4K uh, handmade rematting, recompositing of uh, one of the most iconic shots of film history. It's really good. Am I still stuttery? Uh, your audio is great, but your frames per second are really bad. That's well, I'm not going to reload on it. It's fine. I can be like, you know, freaky or whatever. Cool. It's, it's all right. Okay. As long as my audio is good. Yeah. Uh, and you're getting the, the thing. It's probably CNN, you know, so let's kill this, this tab. Bye. Bye tab. <laughs> it could be actually. Uh, so did you see the, uh, the Da Vinci uh, photo that it's been around for a while, but it, I actually, this morning was having more fun than I should have uh, zooming as far into Da Vinci. Uh, just because when you see these paintings, what you don't ever actually see is the canvas underneath yeah. it. Like they never, you never zoom in and see the canvas and it's just really neat to like zoom into an eyeball, uh, you know, and see, Oh, you know, this is actually a physical object. Uh, there's a lot yeah. of things about Renaissance paintings that fascinate me, but, uh, one of them is that a big part of their training was just learning how to like stretch canvas. And the other one is like a big part of it was like learning how to make and discover and do the chemistry necessary to invent these pigments. Like yeah, all right. these are, these are problems that don't exist, uh, you know, for so much art today, because so much art for today is more like, you know, is my web browser going to crash while I'm trying to, you know, click on the, the tool. Well, you know, blues were, were really interesting. So they would actually grind lapis lazuli, lazuli however you say it? That Minecraft into block. A fine powder. No, they would, they would grind it into a fine powder and mix it with linseed oil or rapeseed oil. And uh, yeah, I mean, and so it would literally last the ages. But it was also like incredibly, not toxic, but you would get like a, a form of silicosis from the grind. You know, because they weren't wearing masks to protect their lungs, you know. But yeah, like, like the well, also because they value their freedom, Chris. Uh, sure. Right. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Masks, masks, freedom. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, there's the knife. There's the knife. There's yeah, the yeah. Knife. Very subtle. Very subtle. I, I like this guy. He's like, hey, mm. what? Don't talk to me. I'm just over here having some food. I just want to eat my delicious. I don't know. What are they? This. Uh, what are they eating? I just see like a bunch of rolls. Uh, well, there's a bunch of rolls. Yeah, they, they, they're very... Oh, wait, here's some meat. Oh, a leg. No, is that a fish or a chicken? It looks like a uh, leg of something. It looks like a, like a duck. Mm. Something like that. So we have some little citrus slices Oh, here. yeah. Hey, but see, now that's the thing. You can zoom in and actually see this. I mean, so, yeah, that's definitely a chicken or a duck leg, right? Or a goose leg. Some sort of shank. Geese are the worst, you know? Um, man, bread, I wish I could bread, paint apricots, you know, it, it's with that sort of attitude. I'm not surprised you can't just start doing it, man. You got a good 40 years left on this earth. Go learn to paint. There you go. You're, you could be the next Da Vinci. Nope. Mm. There's a whole lot of reasons that ain't going to happen. Oh, is this the, 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 the 10 pieces of silver? No, no, that's his mask. This? Yeah. It's his mask. Someone did bring a mask. Yeah. Look, the one really Democrat like at the table, yeah. but he took it off because of peer pressure. I don't know. They 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 like to help the poor and and feed the the hungry. So I'm pretty sure they're Democrats. But um, yeah. I mean, this isn't supply side Jesus. Come on, Chris. Uh, they are Christians, therefore they are Republicans. Because according to my father, the these salt? are mutually exclusive concepts. Is this him spilling salt? Yeah. That's telling. Anyway, we should. Yeah, uh, so Google Arts and Culture has some amazing gigapixel images, honestly. We should uh, spend some quality time inventing some, uh, was it Dan Brown, uh, the Da Vinci Code guy, inventing our own conspiracy theories about pieces of art. Yeah. Maybe we could get yeah. QAnon to help us. Oh, God, those people. I'm sure we could. Oh, oh okay. So here is one of my, my favorite. Uh, Basically, uh, so there's no end of, if you look up Cavalier, it's basically middle uh, ages uh, code for guy who's a jerk to women or a party bro. Okay. Party bro. So like, Dude, seriously. Bro. So there's lots of party bro 
cavalier shots, and it's basically paintings taken from the insides of pubs. <laughs> okay, and like one of my favorite ones is over at uh, One London, and it's uh, a cavalier, and he's like, you know, and people are parting in the background. I mean, it is the closest thing you have to like Middle Ages Instagram. You know, like check out this cool rave, y'all. You know, it, it, it took me it so took me thirty seven days to paint it. <laughs> But it's fantastic. It really is. For sure. I find that very have you? Uh, I, I'm, I have to have mentioned this to you guys before. Have you guys seen the the movie Tim's Vermeer? Uh, I, I I know about the movie. I have not seen it. I bet you it's wonderful. It's freaking awesome. But I have a warm fondness for Pendulette, uh in many contexts, and uh, he it's like a friend of Penn and Teller uh, is the guy that did this, uh, and it is. Yeah. It was way harder to let people know that a party was lit back in the day. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Super lit. You can't just selfie that. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna load this. No, I <laughs> highly recommend that uh, if you're looking for a documentary, Tim's Vermeer is is great because it is a case study in obsession and like what yeah. happens when a uh, engineering mind gets enough money to do whatever it wants and it doesn't care about the value the like the meaning of it just goes nuts and yeah, so here's one of the dutch masters uh 1662 ish uh, you know 1526 is the number it's not the, the year i don't think and like look at this guy look at i i i cannot tell you how much i love this painting so yeah these people make it out in the background so right? you've got this guy and that is the largest glass of wine in the Middle Ages, because usually the glasses were really small. Right. They held maybe an like ounce. the ones that we just and saw in the Last guy, Supper. Yeah. Right. And but this guy, he's got a jug of wine. He's got some fish or something. You know, he's like this. He, he is the, the badass guy here. Right. And look at this. He's got this ascot. You know? Yeah. He's like, check me out. I, y'all. Mean, I mean, we've all known this guy or maybe we were this guy. Back yeah. in college, right? So, right. I mean, I've, he's just having a grand old time. Meanwhile, people are having a grand old time around him. So, and it's just called a cavalier drinking, you know. So, yeah. So, what's the modern equivalent of that? Uh, I, I mean, I'd there's say like Instagram, like right, but there's got to be like one cliche on Instagram, like one one cliched pose or something that uh, that you've all, that we've all seen. Uh, that's a good question. Well, uh, courts have ruled that uh, Facebook widgets can be considered wiretaps. It's actually a weird I story. That was really interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. a weird story. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, I guess it makes sense, but like, it's one of those things where, like, when it comes to the law, I have a really hard time understanding because so many times the law says this, says one thing, and then the implementation of it doesn't read to me like what the law says. That guy looks grumpy. That guy looks like a robot. <laughs> enhance, enhance. Zoom. Go in deeper. Let's check out those pores. Oh. Okay, that's enough pores. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is actually really interesting. So if a Facebook widget can be considered a wiretap, and Facebook has uh, tracking widgets, for lack, lack of a better word, uh, basically throughout the entire internet, what does this mean? You know. I mean, I think philosophically... What it means is uh, just having somebody click I agree on a text field uh, is not a sufficient defense for monitoring and logging all of their actions on the internet. Uh, and therefore, like you can't just act, you can't just, because, you, because you're on my web page, you don't just get free access to all of the sensors on my device. Uh, and the ability to do with that as you will, because I clicked OK on a giant text field that I didn't read. Yeah. And I guess the, the, the higher level point is that we all sort of agree that the government has to jump through hoops in order to do this sort of thing for criminal purposes. Facebook isn't a government. And so the, I guess we are suggesting perhaps that we hold corporations to a higher standard than no standard sure but too much. 
I don't know. Uh, I think it's all kind of crappy. Yeah, this is one of those stories where I think that y'all should talk about it because I just think that. You know, <laughs> yep. <laughs> 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 well, you see, uh, oh, you know what I'll do here? I'll put uh, on the stream, Chris, my picture is now over top of you. Hey, Rob, it's just uh, it's just the Robs now. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, okay. Rob, you're below me. In stutter vision, you know. Uh, Rob, you're below me. So if you if you if you if you need to, you can just sort of look up. Uh, yeah, we can like hang out. Uh, so now that it's just us free people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Freedom's just another word for, for no GSUs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I mean, you know my opinion on this stuff. I think that they're all doing, you know, some degree of horrible. So. <laughs> oh, here comes Laszlo. All right. Yeah, now I'm sure. Sure. All right. I kind of feel like, though, that, I mean, isn't this. We're trying to put the cat back in the bag, really. For sure. Yeah. And that's exactly it. Like, I I mean, this goes back to why I still feel bad about decisions that I made 20 years ago, which seemed like the right decision at the time. Uh, right. But, you know, when you look at it 20 years later, you're like, oh, that was just one tiny little step uh, along the uh, inevitable uh, 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 road to where we are today. Yay! I'm yep. back. My son needed a thing, so that's okay. We're done uh, dissing your employer. You know, I, the only thing I would say is that you know, uh, when you go to someone's website, it is still their website. You know, so like sure. for instance, when when you were running Slashdot, you know, when people would say, "I need you to do this and this and this," you'd be like, "And why would I pay attention to your needs?" You know, for sure. Uh, you know, so. I, I, you know, so, so this is actually a constant refrain in the courts and, and for sure, know, the rest. what is the difference between private property and the rights of people who might visit it? For sure. You know? and, and for me, what it always comes back to is you can always win an argument by citing Robert's rules of order. Uh, and you can be technically correct, the best kind of correct and the still best be wrong. Kind of correct. Well, and that's and that's not universally true, but it's 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 often true. Uh, and I think that's what you see, like with Facebook and the wiretap thing. I mean, they are probably technically correct, the best kind of correct. Did do they do things wrong? Probably. Uh, do they do it out of evil? No, they just do it because they have a mission to uh, make money or maximize shareholder value or bring the world's information together, whatever, however you want to phrase it. Uh, but I mean, they, that's their deal and that's the, the history of capitalism and it's awesome. Well, you know, it's the old, uh, you know, the problem with, uh, with democracy is that it's pretty, it's the worst form of government, except for when you compare it to everyone else or whatever. That's right. Anyway, right. I, you can answer it. Um, I want to talk about my friend Taylor Lawrence and how the jolly Srinivasan has been a big jerk face. All right, tell us about the, the and it is to be clear, this is not uh, the werewolf uh, from Twilight. <laughs> yeah, so I mentioned this before the show, and 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 Malda's like, uh, is that the werewolf from Twilight? And I'm like, Taylor Lawrence is a New York Times reporter who covers really cool new things on the internet, like TikTok and the rest. She is in no way a shirtless werewolf, you know, from the shirtless werewolf tribe of, of Northwestern Seattle. There's a lot of those out there. You got to be careful. But, well, yeah. I mean, have you ever been to Seattle? I mean, it's just it's all shirtless werewolves. It's like yeah. it's like they're maggots on a piece of meat. They're everywhere. Well, that's why they had to make that uh, that zone, uh, that special zone where it's all peace and love and <laughs> no violence. Is, <laughs> the job is peace, love, no violence, and shirtless werewolves. Shirtless werewolves. <laughs> that, that's the place where the shirtless werewolves can wander free. <laughs> you know. So I have a, I have a couple of employees. I have an employee who who lives in the in the chop. Uh, the 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 Capitol Hill occup occupa occupation province protest is it still I, technically I, open? I, I thought it got kicked out yesterday. Uh, yeah, they had a bunch of people moved out by the cops uh, yesterday. But um, you know, and also Brian Aker lives in the yes, he does. He bikes by and uh, uh, shares updates on a regular basis on the Facebook. Yeah, 
yeah so you know I, i'm not on facebook so um but yeah so so i think it's hilarious because like when i talk to ann or, or you know when i hear about stories from the chop it's always like violence and blood and, da, da, da. and she's like yeah they're you know they're they're currently giving tours you know <laughs> right <Okay. laughs> but yeah so uh but taylor is not a werewolf uh that you know of uh a i think late 20s uh, you know, woman journalist at, at the New York Times. And apparently there was on Clubhouse, which is like a, it's like Discord for, for VCs and kind of douchey people. Um, you know. <laughs> douchey Discord. <laughs> I mean, it kind of is, is, right? Is, is that in their marketing materials? Uh, it should be. Uh, they got like, oh, $12 million from Andreessen Horowitz. And they've got a bunch of VCs in their, their little secret rooms chatting. Apparently in one of the 400 person chat rooms, voice chat rooms, they Ooh. spent an hour talking about Taylor and how she's a big bully and just like really being kind of crappy uh about her and 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 this isn't about being mean to a, a woman or a person of lower economic status this is a bunch of jerky very frankly powerful people spending their time you know obsessing on a single reporter's coverage of some of their their companies and Honestly, it, it, none of them come out of this looking any good. Honestly, it seems like if you're going to do that sort of thing, the farthest you could ever hope to go with your career is president of the United States of America. Right? Exactly. Right? That's all you have open to you. Yeah. So if you're some Bitcoin bro slagging on Taylor, you know, in your clubhouse, it, it's just like, and then it gets, so somebody uploaded the entire audio stream to SoundCloud. And, it's, <laughs> and, and first of all, you know, these people... You know, if you want to go to sleep, listen to the first three minutes of that damn SoundCloud, because it's just a bunch of, you know, people referencing dumb business tracks, you know, like, well, I was reading zero to one and then I, I read this and then I read that, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe you spent time saying those words, you know, Robert, I'm sorry for interrupting. Well, it's, it's hard being the captain of industry. That's all I'm going to say, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody understands your broadened perspective of the world. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I know what it's like to be covered oddly by reporters. I mean, that is nothing new. But, you know, I mean, this is not the answer. The answer is not to have a big pile on. I mean, I've been on both sides of this story. Right? It, it's it's very weird. You know? uh, it does suck. Uh, I don't know the specifics of the story, but I do know that... Uh, uh, I mean, even back in the day, we would crap on reporters, uh, but usually we would crap on reporters because they were, you know, hacks, uh, <laughs> and we wouldn't generally do it in a public forum. We would do it in, uh, you know, like the, well, we the, the editor's them. channel we tell people to go bully them or, you know, or threaten them. I mean, we would just be like, oh, that's a reporter that kind of sucks, you know, and then we just wouldn't fucking reply to them. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, we that's the answer. You just don't interact with the reporters who are terrible. You know, we, we talk about it privately in IRC. Right. Yeah. But, but we wouldn't say stuff like this. We've never said stuff like this guys. You know, I mean, at least I, at least I don't remember ever seeing any of us go off like this. And I'm sure somebody has the IRC logs. Probably, probably Uriah has it on some server somewhere. Guaranteed. But it's like, you know, yeah, can confirm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Our, our venom was pretty much contained to that guy sucks or let's not post from him anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. He, he keeps emailing us. Let's that stop. Let's stop replying to his emails. I oh, mean, look, look who's in the submission bin again. Right. Delete. Right. You know, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, we good. had, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, we developed pretty advanced tools for the era, uh, that allowed us to identify repeat offenders, uh, in the in the bad reporters club for sure. Yeah, and quite honestly, I can only remember having a handful of like super aggressive dirt bags who would press the issue. You know, the and, thing that always and, uh, made me the most frustrated, and uh, I don't know how much uh, I mean, Rob, you you would know more of this uh, than Chris, but uh, 
uh, in the middle days of the fire hose, the late 2000s, I suppose, just watching as an unembargoed story gets submitted by three different publications within 60 seconds of the end of the embargo, and then watching like 10 people from the same IP vote up and down all of the rival stories and all the local stories. Like, wow, you guys are garbage. Well, I mean, it's funny because the... I I always balance that with like, listen, there are professional journalists and reporters. Sometimes tech news can be basically fan fiction. I get it. I don't really hold that against them. I hold it against them when when they would like spam the submission queue. And it was clearly a concerted effort to try to get something on the site or you get like eight people submitting the same story. You know, I mean, 10 people voting up a story. Who cares? Right. But it's like, yeah, yeah. Well, I cared when I cared. I, I cared less stuff, when you know? when one publication voted their own story up eight times. I cared more when that same publication would then vote down their yeah. rival yeah. publication. Yes. And you're basically posting the same story. It's an embargoed press release that you rewrote. Yeah. Uh, I mean, neither of y'all yeah, are I mean, special. It, it doesn't speak well to their character. Let's right. Just say that. But but that said, you're not then hopping sure. on a on Discord and saying, you know what we should do? We should, you know, threaten her. We should, right. you know. Right. That's for sure. It's like yeah. these 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 guys, they just they went too far. You know? And also and I should also point yeah, out. Yeah, they created I fake know. accounts and stuff to mock this person. That's not cool. It's messed up. And like and I should point out, I know Taylor. I like Taylor. She's actually covered <laughs> TikTok retweeted my daughter, so I am super biased. I really, really like her. She's really, but like, you know, this kind of crap is just, you know, these, especially, and, and Bajali has a reputation for this kind of thing, right? People talk about it in the valley how, oh, don't, you don't want to cross him. He's really petty. He's really da 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 da. And it's like, if, if that's what he wants people saying about him, just keep doing this kind of crap, you know? Yeah. So. Anyway. Yep, that's shitty. I was we trying would, to we would if we had a problem, we would just ban people and then they would have to talk to me about why they were banned. And it's like, oh, because you were racist. Out of our new account. Oh my goodness. Right. Yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean Yeah. Knowing their IPs kinda helped with that. <laughs> right. Anyway. There was an imbalance in the arms race. Okay. Happy John three. <laughs> are are you happy John, by any chance? Are you, are you a different uh, dude? Because you sound just as racist as Happy John two and Happy John one. Oh God! And you, so and you share racists. an IP address. <laughs> you never met the guy. Weird. Why are there so many racists? All right. <laughs> and is it really just like one guy who's really really good at scripting? You know, I get, it's sort of like, like you, know, you know my opinion on flat earthers. It's like, I don't actually think there's a lot of them, right? It's just that they're so happy to talk to any reporter who's willing to give them a, a platform that, you know, you start seeing the same flat earthers over and over and over again. You're like, all right. You know, so you stop paying attention, right? But For sure. It's like, I, I wish that that was true with just racism, you know, where it's really just like four or five antediluvian jerkbags, you know? Yeah, uh, I live in Michigan. I got some bad news yeah, for you. Yeah, it's, it turns out it's about at least a third of us. Us? Us? Are you? Wait, what? <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking about Michigan. Although I'm sure it's probably true of all places, except large cities. Yeah. No, it's funny. All the people who are now like suspending uh, Twitch suspends Trump campaign account, Reddit bans pro Trump groups. It's like, oh. yeah, now that he's on the way out. And you think, well, now that they think he's on the way, it's not going to get rid of But now that he's as unpopular as ever, we're in the middle of a pandemic and people are literally protesting and burning stuff in the streets. Now we're like, you know what? Maybe you've got a point. (laughs) Those those were some pretty jerky things that he's saying. Uh, Yeah, yeah, this this goes back to the whole, I don't know, there's 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 a freedom of speech thing here. And there's a uh, there are platforms that profit by uh, taking campaign advertisement money, and there are platforms that profit by gaining tra- traffic 
by promoting this content. So you have uh, things at odds with each other. Uh, and something's got to give. And it turns out that's America. Well, so it's funny. So uh, I think it was yesterday there was a story. Uh, and I'm, I'm really reticent to say too much about it, but I'm going to, I just have to talk about it. Uh, so uh, apparently it got leaked from Facebook that uh, Zuckerberg, uh, about the Unilever and other companies yeah, yeah. boycotting Facebook, he's like, yeah, they'll be back. And it's and like, he's right. I hate to say it, he is not only right, he's like, listen, for the next six months, we have decided to take political advertising. We're going to milk. And he didn't say this at all, but you can almost hear them talking about it. Like they're going to make so much money yep. taking political advertising over the next six months that they're like, so we're not going to be able to advertise Klondike bars. Oh, who cares? They'll be back when the inventory opens up again at the end of this you know, thing, we yeah. have the people. They're yep. sharing their baby pictures. They're yelling at each other over racist crap. Yep. You know, so they'll be back. And it's, it's just yeah. like. Well, they'll, they'll for sure get them because you won't believe what people will do for a Klondike bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what will you do for a Klondike bar? That's you lover, right? Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I guess what I'm trying to say is like, listen, you know, uh, Facebook is, if anything, probably being the most honest online advertiser you know in the social media world they're like listen we're going to take the ads we're going to put that money and we're going to put it in our pockets do you understand the money will go from the campaigns into our pockets and that's going to be fine and and they're going to comply with all the laws around election advertising they're going to have the archives so you can see all the different ads but they're like listen we are an ad driven social media photo sharing platform we're going to take ads from these people. And and if people don't like it, then they should leave the site. And Unilever did exactly that. And they're like, okay. you know. And until the math changes, they're not going to change. Facebook is just a math equation. They're like, as long as we keep getting paid, we keep doing what we're doing. Oh, for sure. They ran the math. And they and this is no different than uh, you know when uh, I don't know Hannity or whatever gets uh, gets caught saying something racist, then uh, Ford or Pepsi or Starbucks says they won't advertise on that show anymore, and they just advertise in the different hour of the network. It doesn't matter. I I think a big problem with this too is people have legality and morality so intertwined. Right. Yeah. That yeah until I think that this whole problem might be fixed a little bit if people didn't tie those two ideas together so closely yeah maybe technically correct and that's that's the fundamental problem right you can hang your hat on technically correct and i mean that's it makes me sad i mean i was raised with a with a moral code i try to be decent i fail sometimes fail a lot uh i try not to just be technically correct when i can uh you know but the internet is uh, is very uh, heavily weighted towards comments that have zero nuance, courtesy of uh, the primary uh, social network platform uh, for most of its existence, limiting you to basically a sentence. So we murdered nuance. Uh, and so the person with... Like we, instead of arguing the fact, we can argue your grammar. Good job. You're technically correct. Well, and it's, you know, the, the the fact that when you're driving down the highway, you, you notice the accidents. You don't notice everyone who's For sure. driving correctly, right? For sure. I mean, that's just, hum- that's just human nature. So as long as, as long as our brains biologically function as they do right now, that will always be the truth. <laughs> unless, unless we do something actively to change that. And I, I don't see that happening. You mean like heroin? Well... You know, institutionalized reprogramming not to be excited by by the dumpster fire, right? But, uh, <laughs> good luck, good with, luck that. with that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that ended up being happy and cheerful. Let's say goodbye <laughs> to the internet, guys. <laughs> well, it was nice knowing you, internet. Damn shame what happened to you. Oh, the internet will be fine. It'll just be a dumpster fire. That's all. Yeah, my final finger. I won't get it till September. 
As soon as I do, though, you'll be the first to know. Excellent. <laughs> goodbye, Chris DeBona. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, Rob Roseboom. See ya. Uh, I am Rob Commander Taco Malda. This has been episode 483 of Geeks in Space. Uh, take care, be well. Try to stay cheerful. Uh, I know it ain't easy. Do your best. <laughs>